Hello and Hi. welcome to another one podcast. We have a Patreon. It's one of the best Patreons in the game. By best, it's more of us. Hundreds of hours of content. The specials on there. Three. Three <laughs> specials. Two live shows. It's one of the best Patreons around. You won't regret it. Sign up. Three quid a month. That's all it fucking is. I can't promise you it's one of the best or the most valuable. But if you enjoy us... I think it is. It's the only way to guarantee this carries on. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So, Genuinely. it's up to you. Would you like this podcast to carry on? <laughs> if the answer to that question is yes, then why not part with 75p a week by signing up to our Patreon? Patreon.com forward slash another one podcast. Sign up to it. You don't even have to enjoy the content that's on there. You don't even have to watch it. No. Just, just 75p a week yeah. so that you get your public episode every week guaranteed because if it drops below a certain level, it <laughs> will stop. 75p a week. The minute this costs us money again, it's gone. Yeah, and it's... Barely even. <laughs> so, please... For the love of God. Yeah, please now. It's beyond a joke now. There's only one podcast that needs the money and that's ours. We're absolutely brassic and we've got the most... Outgoings like dependence. Another one. Another one. Another. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 142. 143. 143 of another one podcast with me, Simon Wozniak. Joining me is co host, co host, brother from another mother, brother in arms, Rob Thomas. He's off. What's happening? Um, uh, I'm going to say something then, but I've forgotten now. Uh, anyway, and joining us today, very, very special guest. Very, very special guest. You could get me back in the will on this episode. On the latest. Is Paul Sinner. Oh, yeah. There you go. The voice of uh, The Chase. Well, one of the seven voices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're the main guy, I reckon. Were you, were you, on, were you an OG? Or were you. No, no, not an OG. You, okay. you were I was fourth on. Right. And the British public do not like change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you still get heat now? Uh, no, no, not not now. But I felt like Scrappy Doo at the start. It was yeah. It, 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 the hell, who the hell is this? <laughs> the, the, the abuse on Twitter when I first went on, <coughs> unbelievable. Really? <laughs> Who's this toad-faced pimp? Was my favourite. <laughs> Were these like old people or just all like nameless, faceless trolls? Nameless, faceless trolls. Right. Of course, yeah. I wonder if the old people are more likely to just like. I think they just sit there. No, yeah. They'll just sit there and fume if they see you in in the flesh. Yeah. They'll give you it. I I like the idea of some seventy-year-old grand just go. Who's this? Who's this toad-faced <laughs> pimp? <laughs> Ruining my favourite show. How did you get the gig on there? Uh, it's a long story, really. Right. There's the. I mean, this all boils down to the fact that there's a world out there that people don't know about, like uh, quizzes, sort of fight club style contests, ma- mano a mano combat, four versus four, one versus one. Uh, sometimes it's just sitting in a social club on a Saturday morning doing an exam. There's this whole, <laughs> there's this whole world out there. People take it really, really seriously. I can believe that. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I can, yeah, that that and, makes sense. And we're all from that, we're all from that world, basically. Right. Uh, and so you hang on in there, you take part in stuff, and eventually, you st- a bit like comedy, I suppose. Eventually, you get noticed. Yeah. Uh, and talent spotted, and uh, in 2011. The chasers that were there, which is Sean, Anne and Mark, were asked to recommend somebody for the fourth chase, and they recommended me because I was a stand-up comic. Oh, nice. Right. So the likes of Eggheads, were they chosen from that world as well? Yeah, although... Um, no, no, yeah. There's, there's the, ab- absolutely. The, the, I mean, Kevin from the Eggheads is like the king. Right. He's the G- he's the sort of original G-O-A-T. He's the <laughs> one we all, all look up to, and he's, he's an amazing guy because he doesn't even do any work. He just reads books. Oh. He, doesn't, he doesn't do the internet. He doesn't learn lists of shit. He, he just is there a, um, is there a thing in the quiz world for full time quizzes and people who still have day jobs like there is in comedy? So you're looking at someone going, yeah, but you're you're, you're going to get ahead. You're a full. You, you got you can do this full time because you don't. Yeah. You're with the bills. I've th- got. There is, but there's only the egg heads in us. We're the only right. full time quizzes. That's what there's I mean. There's not many. There's not there's loads. There's, there's can't go around all the pubs winning hundred quids every Monday and Tuesday night, can you? Probably cooler than those hit boxes. If, if, yeah, if, if, if we walked into a pub to do a pub quiz, there was a hundred quid prize. I think everyone in the pub would have. 
permission from me to cheat. Yeah. <laughs> like, get, 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 your, get your smartphones out. I remember you telling me years ago, there was one fella, the, the, four pre- the professional quizzes were the eggheads, the chasers, and one fella went round rinsing f- his boxes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, he can't do it now because that's not how the machines are wired. Yeah. But there's a guy that I used to know, well, I still do know, just haven't seen him for a while, and he made 25 grand a year. He was a, from just wandering around pub quiz, um, pub quiz machines. That's really, amazing. and how Tw- long did he keep that up for? Yeah, absolutely years. He, he just learned. He learned every answer that was on on the machines. That's incredible. Right. Twenty five. I mean, I remember meeting him once in between. In, I went to do a gig in Litchfield. Yeah, uh, and I was walking <laughs> from the car park to the gig when I bumped into him, and I said, "Oh, hello." I won't always says now. I said, "Hello." And he went, oh, "Sorry, can't speak. On my way to another pub." <laughs> so that was his full time. That was his job. Yeah. And did, would you wet that? That seems like why would the chase not try and get him on? Because that seems like a good story to have. Well, you know, how did he keep it up? Does it make him interesting just because? No, but TV's TV. I think that's fascinating. I mean, I I agree with you. It'd have been great to get on, but TV's TV. They have their quirks, and yeah, it's it's, it's just like it's just like Britain's Got Talent or whatever. There's an there's a there's a a manifesto. There's a way they do things. Yeah, it's it's just there's a certain thing they're looking for. Exactly. So how how old are you when you got the chase? Uh, Oh Christ! Um, forty one. And so were you just because obviously when when did you like? How long you been on the circuit then? Oh well, I, my first gig was 1995. My first, right. prof- I, I'd say I, I'd call myself professional about 2000, so 11 years. Right. Yeah. So were you just circuit, at, just going on the circuit, and then when the chase obviously blew you up. Yeah, that's basically well, circuit and Edinburgh. Right. And bits and pieces on the radio. So well, it was um, a reasonably what? Well, by the time I got the chase, I was a reasonably well-known comedian. Yeah, you. Were, I think you yeah. would have been off before I even started. Well, no. When, when, I, when I when I when we first met was I give you a lift from the Frog to somewhere in Liverpool to laugh the house. The rest is history. Yeah, yeah. The rest is. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure you were you doing the chase then or not. I can't remember. Don't think so. I think he was the chase after that. So you you were a headliner sort of thing before yeah, the chase, yeah. wasn't you? So you're well known. I was doing. Right? I mean, I was. You know, I'd, I'd given up. I'd given up medicine f- to do comedy full time. So I was. Was doing, that two thousand? Two thousand seven. I qualified as a doctor. Two thousand. So you qualified as doctor around the same time you sort of were getting professional. Yeah, fees. and I did both for years. Yeah, and then was the, the, was he, it was it was they were the golden years because <laughs> I, I wasn't employed by anyone. I was a locum GP, so you were in control nice of your own timetable. Why are you? I've got a lump on my left arm. I've not. <laughs> I've not had that look that phrase. Right. Okay. So you just. So what? I given up the GP one seems mad to me because we often speak about the going like the money side of it. So yeah. when you're like, because like Chris Keir is another one, isn't he? Who's got like something that he can just. Yeah. He's he's a, he's, he's a barrister. Yeah. So he, or he was, when he's, he's a lecturer now, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he, like, he does both, doesn't he? No, no. He's he's got he's um, left. He's but left like, lecturing. Go, having like that stable sort of income, yeah, and like that decent job, you were just like. That's why it took so long to give it up because it yeah. was it was a decent job and it was stable income. I mean, in two thousand six. I mean, I didn't realise really how weird it was until 2006 when I was nominated for the Perrier or whatever you want to call it. Right. And people were like, but he's got a full-time job. And I didn't realise that nobody else nomi- nominated yeah. for the award. Was that because, did you look at like... <laughs> was that frowned? Was, did they frown upon it, did they? It or? was com- commented on. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember I remember Adam meeting Adam Hills for the first or second time and him yeah. just seeming a, just r- really, really confused... I was right. a doctor that was doing stand up, not because of just because you know, who's got time to do more than one job. But yeah, now, loads yeah. of people, uh, if you, if I mean, it depends what you call a second job because loads of people have got like radio, that's ra- what radio, I thought, that's what I think, DJ yeah. jobs or There's certain ones that you can supplemental do. income, sort of thing. exactly. Yeah. I work three hours a day outside of, outside of stand up, that's it. I do a screen yeah. and that's it. It's like I you were saying about giving it up, so like, I've, I've, I, so I, I sort of had to, was forced to go up nights. The reason I. School runs sound, it's decent enough money anyway, that's why I've kept that on. But the reason I stopped doing anything else is because I got recognised too much. And I can't, yeah. be, I can't be getting recognised in the, in the Yeah, crowd. I got lucky that I hardly ever got recognised as a t- by patients, which, which yeah. obviously would happen now all the time, but just weird. Yeah. But back yeah. when I was just a comedian, hardly, but when it happens, it's really awkward. Because you give you your heart and soul on stage. You're telling everyone about yeah. your life in fairly murky... Yes. Yeah, you're sort of bleeding for people, aren't you? Yeah. Fairly, fairly murky details. Yeah. Suddenly you've got a couple sat next to you and said, oh, we saw you at Edinburgh. And 
your, your ego kicks in and goes, and? Yeah. <laughs> so whenever anyone says yeah. you're that comedian, you're waiting for a compliment. If the first, if the first compliment. line is, you were amazing, and you're like, well, well done. And, and, and y- y- your comedian's ego really um, is very fragile. And you, yeah. you, if someone says they've yeah. seen you, they've got to give you a big compliment. Otherwise, you're going to go, what, what, what? <laughs> the, I'd the, the ra- I'd just rather they just never said anything. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? That's the bit you just yeah. want. That's why I never really t- told anyone or still don't to this day. If I can get away with not knowing, I, I won't d- say it. I mean, I was doing selfies the other day I was after a gig. And somebody said, you might be one of our favorite chasers. And I examined right, the statement yeah. in my head. I went, might be. And one yeah. of our... <laughs> what is that? <laughs> All you're really saying is you're on the chase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Statistics. There's only seven to choose from. <laughs> it might be one of our favourite chases as a weird backhanded compliment, isn't it? It's, well, it's not a compliment at all if you think of the two statements, one of our... and. But also, did they say be. your favourite comic? No, no, no. They never mentioned no, our being a favourite comedian. I, that's my favourite <laughs> type of heckle, the passive-aggressive one, which is when you, do, do you give your soul on stage for however yeah. long, and someone comes up to you afterwards and says... I like you on the chase, and you realise oh, what, they're yeah. actually, what they're actually saying is we didn't like you. Here. Yeah, 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 we're not a fan of the stand up. Would you have people come onto the Q and A that wouldn't come to? Um, oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that, that's just realistic. You know, I've got two. Yeah. P- I've really got two personas, and the, the, I, th- I thought when I started on the chase, I'd be able to bring my comedian persona to the chase, but it's really two different things. Right. My persona on the chase is sort of smug fact. Fact filled. <laughs> oh, this is the first number one hit single yeah. since 1987. That sort, that sort of thing. I'm not doing that on stage. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one that comes to see me on stage is going to hear facts. Yeah. Do you yeah. get any more people turning up and seeing you and, and thinking, "Oh, didn't you?" This isn't what I want. Yeah, of course. Still, still. Yeah. Um, I remember you telling me on your first tour, you sort of um, didn't you start? Did, didn't you make a conscious decision to mention that you were gay straight away because you've because the because the audience of th- from the chase didn't know, and yeah, you fe- and you felt after like forty minutes it sort of like changed the atmosphere or something. Well, th- th- I mean, the way I look at things, you, you got when you're on on stage as a comedian, that's the last place to hold back. Yeah, you know, you can't just hold back because you're on the chase. No, no, because otherwise yeah. you're going to be a shit comedian. You're going to be a shit comedian. So yeah, I've always, you know, I've always been o- upfront about the gay thing on stage since my very first gig. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't slip out of the closet. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I kept, you know, I started out of the closet yeah, as yeah. a comedian, um, and so I, I think it's more with the par- the, with the Parkinson's thing at the moment. Is I kind of use it as an emotional blackmail by talking about it quite early on. Yeah, so to, to let the to let the audience know if you stop listening to me. You're, you're being disabled. Yeah. You're being, <laughs> you're being an ableist. Well, you use anything, don't you, as a comic? Like, yeah, I, I, and it's fine. I think anything's fair game. Yeah, but if what, you what, can, when go I first it. started talking about the Parkinson's, I, w- I would talk about it at the end. Yeah, but now I'm very much putting it at the be- at the <laughs> beginning. Because <laughs> um, right, they've lost interest at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. gonna, you're not getting the bang <laughs> for the buck. Exactly. <laughs> you bled yourself and <laughs> thinking he's not that nice a person anyway. <laughs> so you start with y- your clothes are first now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. It, it is. It is emotional blackmail. <laughs> Wow. So was you doing stand-up then while you were doing uni? So were you, well, as you were qualifying? Um, no, I was writing. Um, so I went to a med school called St George's in yeah. Tooting. And uh, your brother, Mike Wozniak. Uh, was <laughs> Pull up Mike a tiny bit closer. Sorry, I'm just uh, Your time brother, time. Mike Wozniak, oh, went, yeah. went, Sa- went, sadly, went to George's. Sadly, no relation. Uh, and Harry Hill went to George's. So it's it's got like a, almost like Salford Uni reputation right. for, for producing comedians. Right. Which is really weird because none of us knew each. I mean, I know I know Mike now. Yeah, but I've never yeah. I've only ever met Harry Hill once. So we we're aware of who each other are, but we've never we've never our paths haven't really crossed. Part mm. our paths haven't really crossed. So it's total coincidence. But Bodkin was a GP, wasn't he as well? Who Simon Bodkin? Wasn't Brodkin. He? I mean, ev- everyone's put a different amount of number of years in. Bodkin uh, did a couple of years. Mike wasn't it? Did a few. Mm. Right. I I I, I did. Uh, how many did I do? Twelve. I stopped. I, th- I think I put in one of the biggest stints so of, of the comedians. Where was you medically then when you started stand up? As in, like, trying my, f- my my first house job. My f- I was a junior doctor in South London, so I, I worked um, a full day. Yeah. At St Helier's Hospital fr- on Friday, and then got into the car, and drove okay. to West London to do my first gig. Wow. At 
the viaduct in in the Hanwell. And did you die or not? Mostly. <laughs> I mean, if if I died completely, it's really you, you, you. I probably wouldn't have done it again. It probably, that probably yeah. would have been it. But I didn't die completely. I did all right. You got by the end enough for the bug then. Yeah, exactly. What, um, was there something that made you want to go and do it then after all that training? Because so with me, I'd um, basically failed uni, had to get a proper job. Yeah. I'd come home to Liverpool, started another university degree, and was like, I didn't want to do the first one. Why am I doing the second one? And then I was like, I know what I want to do. I want to do this. It's now or never, basically. It's now I'll go and get a trade or something. Yeah, it wasn't like that for me. I, mine is far more... It was, it was a very different era in 95. There's a lot of people like me. We were just doing it for shits and giggles and noth- nothing else. There was no ambition. There was expected no, nothing out of it. Uh, yeah, expected nothing out of it. There was no career path. There was no, 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 I'd never heard of a comedy agent. or. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I was aware of the Edinburgh Festival, but that was a, that, uh, other than that, my knowledge of comedy was there was a bunch of comedy clubs in, that are listed in timeouts. Yeah. And I just wanted to try it. That was it. I just you know, It's like a bungee jump or going to Brazil or... Yeah, it's just something I wanted to put uh, put to See, t- I never, tick off. I never realised that there was like you could be a circuit comic when I started. I didn't really know what anyone was. T- I didn't. I, th- I didn't know what it was. Like yeah. I thought there was the people on the TV who were just TV people and the millionaires. And then it, I, I went to Hot Water and then in the Holiday Inn and I seen like. But I thought, and you came back. Well, and I just you. I was just looking. I was just looking at it all thing and like, so these make a living. And then it took me a while. To actually see that this is what some people, this is all they do. And I was a bit blown away. I was thinking, is this what you do? I never realised it was like you could make a, a, a wage on a circuit or something. Well, when I started, there were loads of people making a really, really good wage just on the circuit. Uh, yeah. Like, so Adam Bloom and um, Paul Tonkinson and that, that, sort of, that sort of era of comedian. Um, and there's still, there's, there's still people making a living on the circuit without necessarily doing corporates or TV or radio or whatever. Um, and But it's less than before because there's not as many gigs as there used to be. What? Yeah. It's, it's, it's where it's 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 there's not as many gigs or whether the gigs just are, they pay the same. Going on well, sea. The cost of living is different than what it used to well, be. Well, down in London, it's, you know... We've had promoters on who pay the same now as they did in the first time they put a gig yeah. on, which was 20 years ago. I, I think at my peak is a London comedian, which would have been sort of the mid, mid-noughties. mid Yeah. Um, I remember the first time I did two gigs at the comedy store and two gigs at the banana all on the same night and you mm. felt like an absolute king. Mm. Yeah. You, you felt like an absolute king going home with like 800, 900 pounds mm. cash in your pocket. Yeah. yeah. It's just unbelievable. In one night. In one night. And, and the worst thing, th- there is a downside for doing it. Yeah. Which is that your gigs get harder as you go along so you can never actually enjoy the experience. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, I mean, I think I, I've, I think I've done like a three or four gig night which started yeah. off with me smashing the comedy store right, and ended with me dying on my ass at the <laughs> comedy store. <laughs> in, in, in the set. Why, because uh, you're uh, just tired at the end yeah, of it? Yeah, basically. It exhausts you, doesn't it? I often find that yeah. you go, like, oh, I'll put three, four gigs. If, you d- if you're looking at it, oh, I'll put three in or four in. Yeah. But by the time you get to the third and you do feel like this has been hard because you're darting around and you're a bit tired and you you're turning up and you... You don't give the gigs the attention in either either because, like, I always find as well when you, do, one, when you do a number of them, you go into every gig with the same energy. Yeah. Whatever the first gig was, you enter every yeah. gig with that energy, and then not all gigs need the same energy. And like, but also you, you should be allowed to wallow to in your room. triumphs. And if you can't yeah. wallow, if you have come off the stage, you've just had an absolutely ma- amazing gig. You should be allowed to give yourself time to come down from that gig and just appreciate yeah. it and, and just. Yeah. Look How at long? It. Well, a couple of years. <laughs> 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 yeah. People understand that, but I don't. I mean, <laughs> no, I think I think sometimes you can think about it. You go, oh, that was a good gig of a year and a half. I remember when I did that room. <laughs> well, I'm in a situation now where Ollie, my husband, films all my gigs. So, right, I, I'm really, I, I'm really lucky that I'm married to a guy who loves comedy. Yeah, right. And he yeah. absolutely loves comedy uh, and and will do anything to help me get better because he wants me to get better. Because <laughs> he's listened to my jokes so many times. It's like, come on, Paul. Up your game, <laughs> uh, and it's good to have a husband that's pushing me to up my up my game. Yeah. So is he trying to film you to put clips out to grow no, you that's online, not or just for the sake of just? No, that's not the primary reason. The primary. Right. Reason, but if we, if I mean, I'm very new to this whole clips online thing. Yeah. You've dropped uh, a couple though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah but couple. both in the last couple couple of weeks. I've seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we uh, noticed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we we seen it. We do our research on this pod. <laughs> and, but that's mainly because I've got a book 
out and right, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to. I mean, I've been perfectly happy to n- not expand the brand um, <laughs> on, online because I don't, f- I don't, I don't think you get the best of me online. I think you get the best of me live. I think, I, but then that's the same with everybody. Yeah, it's everybody. Yeah, but I think the thing with online, I, I think what's people aren't people aren't grasping now. A lot of people's people aren't. It's changed the way people see comedy. Yeah, and then a lot more like a music um, crowd now. So like back in when I first started, and you probably remember the idea of doing the same joke in front of someone, like more than once, like an audience public. You would you you'd have like sort of oh god, they think they're gonna think that's all I've got. So and then now people see things on TikTok or Instagram, and they come and ask you to do them jokes. Yeah, that's they, really interesting. Like there's a FOMO sort of thing, like when they watch the things of like, oh, I wish I was in that room when they done that. So when they do get to be in that room, they're like, I want to see you do that bit. For like how they, many ta- for how it's long? Like they want to be in that crowd sort of thing. <laughs> and I know for how I know what you're saying. Once, long. once they've seen it live, yeah. it's probably a case of all right, what have you got next? But <coughs> we it used to be a big thing when people feared putting clips out because once the clip was out, the, the bit was dead, <coughs> and it's not it's not like that. They want to oh put God, the, no. put the bit out. <coughs> Unless the bit gets to like on. ten million views and it yeah, changes yeah. your life, but a few hundred thousand views and a clip. Well, I'm very much aware is you just don't know that. Just don't know how a, a clip's gonna necessarily. No, no, oh no, no! no. no. You got no and, idea. And we're, we're, we're sitting, we're, we're sitting on a couple, just <laughs> wondering whether to put them out. The, the f- <laughs> mostly fights, sitting on fights, them. fights, <laughs> fights breaking out when you're on stage. That sort right. of. Thing. Oh, you got a few of them. Oh, they will normally go well. Yeah, yeah, but fight but will always go well. Anything yeah. that causes <laughs> comments goes well. And we, we and we, <laughs> so in, in September, we were, I was performing at a detectorist's conference that yeah. had to be stopped. 15, 20 minutes because of an actual punch up between detectorists. You got that on <laughs> camera? Uh, uh, Ollie's got it on camera, yeah. That'll go oh, well. that anything, but, but, but anything that caught feeling really guilty comments. about it is it was right. raising money for, cha- for cancer. <laughs> the king was raising money for cancer. Monetize it and then yeah. do a ja- yeah. charity benefit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Money ba- to the bang a fundraiser thing at the bottom of it and then you're sweet. And it, it was, it, but it was an insight, it was a window into a different world because the guy who got punched um, apparently. He turns up to digs without without his own equipment. He he, 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 do, he does th- <laughs> he, he, he does things that you just can't yeah. do in the sexual world. Well. He's like a much hated figure. And you find out what's taboo in their world. And within thing. two days, somebody put out a video called "Why I Punched That Why I Punched That Guy." <laughs> he'd, he'd already had a video defending himself. <laughs> Is it a good video that you've got? Of the it's, it's all right, right. You, you, that's the problem. Is you can't go into. Ollie's in the yeah. back of the room. Right. He doesn't know. Sure he's he's not he doesn't know that much. There's, there's he doesn't know there's a fight about to break out. <laughs> he's, not pre- he's not prepared for it. You don't want look scared him for the fight. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. We have anything that encourages comments always does well. Yeah. Like, do we put out anything to do with football, even if it's the most mundane of things. Yeah, it just gets people commenting, going, just they, they just want to start an argument because it's football. That's yeah. all it is. So anything like that that tends to do well, which can be annoying Foot- because you like football does rot people's brains, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I, I did a joke like last week about Ivan Tony and the betting, and it was a good joke and it did really, really well. And then a couple yeah. of Brentford lads came on, came on and said, oh, well, "I thought you were a comedian." And I'm like, "Well, oh. have you seen the, the stats for the joke? Yeah. If you're going to have a go at me for a joke, have a go at me for one that did nothing. Do, yeah, do, yeah. Do, yeah. Do, do, do the tum, do the tum Do you respond to the trolls? I did last week. I did <laughs> <laughs> regretted it. It's, it's never good, is it? No, no. I I've no, I don't think I've really been trolled properly. I give them a little like me, and I'll try and encourage them to write something else, just for the algorithm. But <laughs> right, just I, cause I quite, them. Yeah, well, I just I quite I've got to a percent of zen with it, where any time I see a, someone putting a bad comment, I just think, how shit is your life? Because yeah. there's nothing in me that would ever comment on anything. Yeah, like, it doesn't matter what I watched, to 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 then take the time to. Get this um, the, the keyboard up to type in a comment. Just think, how much of a loser have you got to be? How sad have you got to be in your life? At that, you you'd literally saying that it's some people use their phone now. It's amazing they got. <laughs> no, but I mean, like to, to do that, to actually do that, and then get yeah. the thing up. Yeah, but you're, to comment, you're having like, a shit. That's all to do, three, isn't it? Anything more than three clicks, I'm not doing anyway. So <laughs> so it's like that's the height of laziness. I'm, I, not, uh, I'm not moving my fingers on a device that was built to I facilitate do. me moving my fingers. Sometimes I drive out of gear because I can't be asked changing <laughs> the gear. That's how lazy I am. I do think if, like we spoke before, if I, if we weren't comics, we might be that bitter and twisted that we might troll. I think sometimes comics have got that ego that we needed to get that 
that thing, if we don't get that attention and we see someone else getting it, we yeah. think, fuck that, yeah, I'll be horrible. So you think people who troll are probably a, a comics that should have been? Potentially. Comics that never got Potent- to be People that want to be your friends sometimes. They I, I, be haven't, I haven't looked at these people thinking there's a hidden talent there. So. <laughs> <laughs> there's a <laughs> secret, <laughs> secret stand-up behind them. Well, they've always got like a dog in the profile <laughs> picture as well sometimes. <laughs> the Billy Elliot of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel electricity. <laughs> When I when I troll, but they've also got a lot. I like one of the ones where the, someone will put a post up on Facebook, and the people who still use Facebook are like older, and like yeah. there'll be like some man in sunglasses, army pants, and his dog, mm. and he'd be like, "Never heard of them, all shite." And then I, I enjoy them. Or <laughs> I, I like them. Who are these? Yeah. These are shit. And it's just eight comments on this one Facebook post that no one's even fucking bothered. So funny with. you say that. That was a bit of a turning point for me. About <laughs> four years ago, I saw a video. Troy Hawk at uh, Hot Water, a- yeah. as, as always, absolutely smashing it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and somebody just put, not funny. Yeah. And I'm like, what? What? Fair play, <laughs> though. <laughs> what happened the front? Yeah, just to say, not funny, yeah. It's like, You're all wrong. Yeah. It's objectively smashing the yeah. shit out of the game. You can hear people laughing in the video. Yeah, but it's edited, isn't it? He'll just say, oh, how do we know, though? You can. But also, he's can gone, that. also, he's got, what's wrong with him saying, not funny? Yeah, but if if you're the minority <laughs> opinion, yeah, this is the way this way I look at it. If you're the minority opinion, just move on with your life. If you if you're clearly in the minority, you're clearly yeah, yeah. in a minority. So what what does your what value is your opinion? But how would he know he's in the minority? Was there more because comments or was it just? Oh yeah, there's loads shit loads of comments. Right, on how funny it was. Right, okay, so there's. 841 comments. Yeah, yeah, great, great, yeah. great. Not funny from one and person. Course, and of course, we're the, they're the ones we notice. Yeah, but they're yeah. The, the, that to me is the funny one. <laughs> that's that's funny to me. I go like, oh, look at this guy. You're not clicking on anyone else's profile when you see that comment, are you? You go, yeah. oh, who's this cunt? <laughs> and then it's just him there with his dog. Reform. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, cliffs are Dover and everything. I like it when there's no sense to it. Like, I had one the other day. He's like, where's the comedy start? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can see, what, what the fuck is that meant to be? <laughs> and he say it's not funny, but when's the comedy start? You're like, you're watching a clip of someone who stand up, you cunt. Well, I, I think you've got to let them have the little bits. Oh, I enjoy it, like I say. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a zen with it. I just imagine them sitting in the, like, the box room or... Just mm. their own, like they got, a, they still got a computer in the living room. I like, to, I like, to, I like to imagine them still, still with a PC in the living room, just like doing nothing else but ignoring. I like, think, I think when you, when your your comedy culture, stand up wise, is Liverpool, then you have to harden yourself up anyway because people do tell you after the gig. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they do, mm. they do like to tell you after the gig which bits they liked, which bits they didn't like. Or, yeah, yeah. Or that was great. That bit, but the oh, bit we should be shite that one. I, 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 I quite like people that say, um, "I thought you'd be shit, but you weren't." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's always it. one of my favorite. One of my favorite after gig ones was year, years ago, at the Glee Cardiff. We were talking about fifteen years ago, and after the gig, someone said, "When you walked onto stage, I thought, oh well." Here we go. <laughs> and I'm like, what was it about me when I walked on stage yeah, other than yeah. my brown skin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I was going to yeah, say, yeah, you yeah. get a lot of the Asian stuff, like, oh, here we go, should we talk about being Asian? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, he, d- d- he just didn't realise how he much he's he'd given. nice, though, doesn't he? He didn't realise how much he'd given wa- yeah. away with, yeah. That, yeah. with that comment at all. But he thinks he was being nice. Yeah, yeah. He thinks, oh, he's going to love this. Right. It, 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 well, you, so and that's the other thing is people don't know, do they? I was talking about Tolly, but I've got a Hartlepool... For Pete Vincent. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the first time I ever played Hartlepool, a guy came up to me afterwards and said, nice to see someone sticking up for them. <laughs> and yeah. he meant it nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He meant it nicely. Yeah, Hartlepool, yeah. I think they are actively trying to make that gig a bit more that is like diverse <laughs> for the for the community. Yeah. We've like spoke <laughs> about that gig on this pod before. <laughs> yeah. Last time I did that gig, I was closing it. And um, yeah. Jess, uh, is Lily Phillips, is it? Lily Phillips. Lily Phillips yeah. was it wasn't o- Jess Phillips. Was no, it? Lily Phillips was opening it, and she was pregnant at the time. Oh yeah, and they all cheered, and someone called her a slag for being pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and then Faze and Shah was circle in the of life. Yeah. Oh yeah, Faze and Shah was in the middle, and he mentioned his parents were immigrants, and they all booed. Like yeah. they were fine with him, but when he said my parents are immigrants, they booed. Um, and then I, and then the problem was, I'll say the worst thing about the whole gig was I stood at the back going, "I'm going to smash this." 
These are all scum. Mm. I'm gonna absolutely destroy it, and that's uh, it's horrible. That's th- that's my demographic. Well, I suppose I've got the thing where I'm the immigrant. It's all right to like because on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're fine. You're one yeah. of the all right ones. You're one of ours. You, you yeah. be all right. He's one of ours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah you yeah. know Bradley. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's in your corner. <laughs> What's the beast like? He's all right. Is he? Yeah. Uh, is, is, is he an original? He's enjoying life now. He's lost weight, and he's never yeah. off, n- n- never out of social media. Yeah, he's lost divorced, weight. isn't he? He's in the first, first two, him and Sean. Well, are they the, are they the OGs? Yeah, yeah, they're the OGs. Right. It was just two at the start, wasn't it? Yeah, twelve, eight episodes or twelve episodes or something. Right. Two of them. I, I mean, you challenge TV still repeats the first series quite a lot, <laughs> and it's just a different show. No one's trying to be funny. No one's trying to be entertaining. Yeah. It's all wooden and stupid. Fanny Schmeller launched Fanny it, Schmeller a bit, didn't it? Fanny Schmeller yeah. changed everything. Yeah, it did. did it? Yeah, yeah. Fanny Schmeller. Another viral clip, like, but I didn't yeah, that. that's when it became a f- uh, let's have fun now. Because you see, sometimes I don't know whether it's, tr- but sometimes I feel like they're trying to force another Fanny Schmeller. Sometimes, and I've gone, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of that. I can see they, what they're trying. It's really interesting you say that. It's very astute because it doesn't work. Because Bradley's not surprised anymore. No, the, no. The no, reason doesn't. why Fanny Schmeller worked, yeah, is because How Bradley was, was genuinely yeah. sh- uh, gobsmacked. Yeah. The only time it works is with the. Um, Celebrity chase because you've got a studio audience in, so you right. ride so you ride the laughter of the studio audience. So it becomes funny. But in the normal episodes, we don't have a studio audience. Oh, is, it, is, is that since no. COVID or is that oh. always? No, no, we've, we've never had a studio audience. It's, it's right. entirely. So that I'm sure there's a clapping though. Is that just played in? It's, it's called canned. Oh, yeah. oh. Is that really? If you, if, if you if you listen if you now that you know if you watch. No, but the really studio obvious. audience is for everything, isn't it? Like yeah, they'll yeah, know yeah. they'll have one. Yeah, true. Do so. You want do you all still get wound up when people accuse you? Wants to be a millionaire of cheating or accuse you? Of it's a, amazing. I, I find it amazing because it's like we have enough variety in what goes on in the final yeah. chase. There's no, there's no, there's no pattern. There's, there's, there's no something that happens again and again and again yeah. or whatever. Uh, but what we have is a situation where if we don't know something that's easy, we're accused of throwing it. Yeah. If, we do, yeah. if we do know something that's hard, <laughs> we're accused of cheating. Yeah. It's a situation where you just can't win. When the I actual mean, reality is, we're just a bunch of people doing our best. Yeah. I've got That's a mate who loves quiz shows, and he will not have it that the chase isn't rigged. Will not. And I'm like, I've no, I've spoke to him. That it, there's no chance. But if you look, no, 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 no. If no, you no, look no, how no, many no. questions you have to answer, the majority of the time, like, you've probably got what, a ninety percent hit rate. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, there's not many questions you lot get wrong in that final chase. No, but it's designed that way. Otherwise, it'd be bad telly. That's what I mean. So there, there, like were four, there were four difficulty levels of questions on the yeah. chase. So what, one, two, three, and four, and you get equal, each team gets equal numbers of each yeah. level. So right. what happens is for every question that we get, which is what, seven times eight, yeah. they all get a similar question, like what's the capital of England? We, we get the same number of questions, but people don't hear those questions because they want the, well the contestants, they want them right. to win. So they, 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 they blank it out because they want the contestants yeah. to win. Because it, if, if, if you're w- hoping that the chaser loses... Every easy question we get is like a is like a knife in your back. You rem- you remember because you get angry and irritated. How did he get a question like that? They completely yeah. forget that the team got the same number of <laughs> questions. In, yeah, in, in, yeah. In, in, at, that le- at that level. No, I'm I'm blown away by what how much you all get right the chasers. Like that is. So do you just? Yeah, tell you what, annoy, what annoys me as well. I mean, the lower. Off, like, we'll get to the lower. No, off not, people, not, not just that. <laughs> no, I mean, with the chasers, is when they get something right but they don't know it. So they do all the whole tick box things. So they go, oh, well, we can eliminate this and eliminate that. So it must be that answer that annoys me so much. Sorry, but that's it's a multiple. If you give us a multiple choice, exactly team, that gonna, pisses me it, off. I think the player is a multiple. Although choice. I will say, I do think a disproportionate amount of the answers are B. I've sat there with my father and watched. You saw because you were gamblers now, didn't you? I haven't haven't done the stats, but the one thing they don't seem to understand the contestants is this: if it's a numbers question, it's either going to be the lowest or the highest. Because you've got to think, why are they asking you this question? Yeah. If if, if they say how how many people (coughs) Smith were born in England in uh, 2023, and the choices are ten. 10,000 or 1 million. The answer is either going to be 10 or 1 million. Yeah. The middle answer is not it's of surprising. interest. Yeah, in the middle answer is not of interest to anyone. So you so you think that's g- genuine, that every number's one will either be the biggest or the smallest? Usually. Yeah. I mean, you, you usually. It's a little, little. Uh, but, but then <laughs> the, the question setters know that we think that. So we're, we're playing a game against them. 
Yeah. But they sometimes slip ones in just to... Uh, Any other little <laughs> rules that you use just in case you don't know? Yeah, I uh, guess a- get, apple for fruit. Move that a little yeah, bit. Guess Sorry. apple for fruit. Guess apple for fruit because there are more types of apples than anything else. Right. Um, when they ask us what, what insect, we will always, unless we know better, say butterfly. And if it's not butterfly, we know we're going to lose. <laughs> 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 Have you ever seen that one on in Pointless? No. Emmerich Larson. Two girls. Oh, two girls going to point this answer. Two, two girls going on pointless, and they get a pointless answer. And I forget what the question was, but um, they just answered Henrik Larsson for football. And the boyfriend said to them, "If any football ones come up, Henrik Larsson's played for loads of teams, and he's quite successful and, un- and not as well known. So it's probably going to be Henrik Larsson." So they did it. <laughs> she just said she was like, "She just I know doesn't know who he is, didn't know who he played for, nothing." It was just a football question, and she went, "I'm going to go Henrik Larsson." And when they asked her why, she was like, my boyfriend just said, and he comes over. <laughs> and it was pointless. Like, That's amazing. Yeah. yeah he, play, he played for enough teams to be successful at, at most things, but also he's right. well known enough. So, so here's the thing about the chase, when you watch it. They should, in theory, win. But the reason really? they don't... No. The, the reason they don't is because they're not good enough in the final chase. Because the, we're used to the pressure, and they're not. They get in each right. other's way, they put... They, People press to say pass when someone else is about to buzz in and get it yeah. right, uh, and they don't know enough of the hu- you know. When I say it's one, two, three, and four, Turn we will know to seventy-five to eighty percent of the threes and fours. And they yeah. won't, and that's that's where the game is. That's fundamentally where the game is won or lost. So if the, if you have a really good quizzer in the team, yeah, it turns it upside down because they know the, they know the level threes and fours, and that's when. You only need one really good quiz in the team to yeah. turn, turn the whole game upside down. How many times has someone come on that you recognise from the quiz scene? I know it's happened once and he's now a chaser, isn't he? Dara, I, d- I mean, I didn't. Re- he wasn't on the quiz scene. Um, wasn't he? Although, oddly enough, he was He was playing in the Oxfordshire Quiz League for a team that I <laughs> used to play for in a really oh, well. My, my, fir- my first boyfriend, who, who I won't name, uh, used to play in the Oxfordshire Quiz League and I used to make occasional appearances for their team. Yeah. The guy that ran the quiz league got really, really angry kind of forced me out <laughs> uh, even though I only hardly ever played yeah. and the guy that they got to replace him was Dara so it's a really weird oh, wow. really weird coincidence but uh, occasionally we're not meant to play against anyone we know uh, right, right. Um, and and what's funny is when it's a comedian yeah we've had, we've had occasionally yeah because all comedians want to play are, you, you are if I went on the chase and it wasn't you I'd be annoyed there was an open well, spot we can't for play me that did it from the report is there called Jude I didn't. I don't think I played it. I swear she done it. Right. Um, Maisie, Maisie, oh, Maisie, Ad- Maisie Adams is the most famous person to have Maisie done it. Yeah. Oh, on regular chase. Regular chase. She did it. Uh, she hadn't even started doing comedy at the time. All oh, right. She played against me. Right. Uh, uh, there's, there's a clip that, that, that it was so long it didn't make the edit <laughs> about uh, Frankie goes to Hollywood and I just spilled off a whole load of facts. Yeah. And at the end, Maisie Adams said, "I bet he's a hit at parties," really yeah. sarcastically, yeah. and uh, and made both me and Bradley laugh. <laughs> uh, and, um, and that was her. That was that was her birth story. <laughs> yeah, that launched her. <laughs> that made the cinema laugh. Yeah, Will, du- Will, Will Duggan done it? Has he? Has yeah. he? Douglas Kevin Duggan. Dewsbury. What? Yeah. yeah. Duggan's done the chase. Yeah, is it amazing? Yeah. He did the chase, and it turned out he was on a, a royal wedding special. Was his name was Will? <laughs> still, <laughs> How still do I not know about that? Still makes me laugh. <laughs> oh, is he on? I think I remember seeing the time. Like, probably. I don't, I don't He's never I, told I, me that. I'm I say annoyed. probably, I say probably, but I don't think enough people are going to be interested. I would. To put it, to, yeah, because yeah, you know. I want to see what he got. On. Did he get on? Did he win? Or did no, he didn't. The only comedian that's ever won on the show, on the, on the main show, is Pete Techman. Do you know Pete? Oh, no, I've no. seen his name on Facebook. Yeah, from Northampton. Right. He's a good quizzer. Right. Uh, he, he won on the show. Is there any way? You know, like who wants to be a millionaire? They cheated. Yeah. I can't, is there the any way to chase? No, there's, 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 no there's way literally no way to cheat. The best way you can cheat the chase is to watch a lot of episodes and see what sort of questions come up. There's How much of Quizm Liam becomes... Liam Tuffy's done it. Sorry. Yeah. How much of Quizm becomes a th- like basically memory. a memory game rather than know it, ra- rather than the actual knowledge of understanding what you're answering? Quite a lot. I mean, like there must the be uh, answers you know where you're like, I've got no idea what that's about, but I just know that yeah, question yeah, comes yeah. up I mean, and that's the answer. Very early on, very early on, I think it was my first series or second series, they said which Spanish DJ had a hit with, number one hit with uh, Loca People. And I just yeah. smiled and went, Sac Noel. I've never heard the song. I don't know who Sac Noel is. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. Loca People sounds like. 
I just looked, I'd learnt it from a list of number one hit singles. Right, yeah. For that year. And See, so stuff like that really it, annoys me. L- what, learning the number one thing? Yeah, it's just a memory, isn't it? And it's yeah. like, like to say, when, like say the multiple answers, it grinds my gears. When they stand there and they go, well, I know that is, that is something else mm. and this is something else and that, so it must be this. And they think, oh, fuck off. Well, I know, you I, shouldn't be allowed to do that. I know, That's a, cheating. I know a guy that says, like, oh, any, any number one from before 2005. I'll t- I'll be able to tell you, or or any number one, yeah. but then I'll really test him, push him right towards the edge of it, and you then don't believe like, him. Yeah, but like I just I find it amazing. He just then like that quiz like pop master or something. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, just like and and well, he's obsessed from about with two thousand, it becomes really really hard because there's so many number ones that nobody noticed at the time. But also, there's a lot of number ones that are so and so and so and so versus so and so. Yeah. I always mean like that Elvis Presley with uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, a little less conversation. I'm, I mean, I could do it for the 80s. But really? And, yeah. and, and I have been able to do it for the 70s and most of the 90s. And then, my, then it just gets... Right. And the hardest ones are things with generic titles. We, we, you know, uh, who had a number one with love to love you, love you, love yeah. you, girl? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> what is ask, um, me, ask me Barbie girl and I know it's, it's <laughs> Aqua but what is your opinion on the lower offer people it's you've got to understand when you're there it's not an issue when you're there it's, uh, it's, right. it's, it's never been because that will ruin people's days uh, back I, home yeah, I, 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 I'd punch someone on the street <laughs> yeah, so yeah. if I saw someone take a minus yeah. offer no lower offer Fine. A minus one. A minus one. Right. I'll punch you. I mean, it's 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 gameplay, and sometimes it's the no, right option, and sometimes it's the wrong option. You're and, a Tory, and, and it all depends on the best player. Depending right. on what is the opinion of the best player of the team? Because sometimes they're being told by the best player in the team to take the minus offer. Yeah, I've never because really the best seen player in the team wants to win. Yeah, and he knows his best chance, or she knows that she, their best chance of winning is to uh, have, many have as many. But what if one's thick and they're going to pass? That's and you're thinking, oh, you know what? He's well, actual yeah, dead. Yeah. He's going to be trigger happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, just I mean, what, what I'd say about that is discuss your tactics first. Are they allowed to? Yeah, yeah they're, right. they're allowed to discuss their tactics. What I'd say about that is just tell that person not to buzz in unless they're absolutely certain. Have you seen people get really annoyed with, with Oh, there's a famous episode. There's of a violence. There's a, not, we never had violence, but one day uh, in 2012, I think. I went to sleep at about five, not knowing that um, I was on the chase. When I yeah. woke up, my phone had gone absolutely insane. And it was because a Scottish baker, whose name I forget, had called the guy in seat four a maggot. <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, the guy in seat four had taken the lower offer. <coughs> and, 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 he, and he said, I have nothing to say to that maggot. <laughs> And it's just great, great. <laughs> we don't, we don't, but we don't get that anymore. We don't, that's what I, I miss that. Why well, are, are they not getting personalities like that anymore? Is it just it's just because the, the whole ethos of the, of the change is game. Uh, the whole ethos of the game has changed. And people are coming on to win. They're not coming on to win big money. Yeah, They're coming on to win the game. And they know right. the best way of winning the game is to have as many people back as possible. And right. if someone say, t- I mean, if someone's seat one s- takes a big amount of money out, 40, 50,000. That seat four is going to get a horrific minus offer. Yeah. And yeah. most of the time, it's the correct offer s- to take because by the guy taking a big money back, they're already down to win more money than the average episode of the mm. chase. Yeah. They're already down to win more money than what, what the average amount and is. Who will work out the offers? I don't know. Do you get us. told? It's not us. Do you have, do you know your statistics on who? Has lost the most money and won the most. And no, uh, because we don't care. It's not right. for us. It's not about money. It's about playing. Yeah, but it's playing well. Mm. Yeah, but there's not. Is there the money not a is competition a theoretical between us? No, the money is a theoretical number in the head of the ITV producers. It's yeah. nothing to do with and how us. quickly is that paid into the bank account? Twenty percent. How much I'd go for if I thought if it's on the day, I've obviously taken the minus off it. But if it's like six months down the line, I'd oh, what if go. you're if you're a contestant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 like a cash yeah, gig. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like... If it's a cash um, gig, I'd take a little bit less. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, 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 I've no idea. We, we are competitive, but we, yeah. we, 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 we're we all playing a different game. We're playing different players. We're playing different teams. I, know, we, I just we, think I couldn't help myself, we, mate. We, we are competitive on Beat the Chasers. Yeah. Um, for sure. And even then, we're meant to be playing as a team, but we are, we are competitive. We do like to get to the buzzer quicker than our teammates. 
do you all um, still quiz, like in leagues and teams? Me and Anne obsessively. Yeah. Uh, Jenny and Dara moderately, and Sean and Mark they're, they're too busy. Isn't it? Right. I mean, Mark's Mark's got a kid, and Sean's yeah. sixteen. And he's, he's, Sean is busy living. Th- the high life. So y- you do stand up outside of it as well. Do them three? What do them three do apart from? They just well, the good news is it's a decent wage, and yeah, they don't have I mean, to. They don't have to do anything. Right. Um, yeah. Jenny's trying, sort of being musical comedy. She took a show. Oh, she, she? she had a show at Edinburgh last year. She's always been a big fan, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah every time we, I think we've gigged together before, and she's and she's been. Yeah, but she's down. also she did a show at Edinburgh last year, and she's going mm. on tour this this autumn. Has oh, she been wow. doing like gigs, or yeah. is she just doing? I'm not um, sort of. She, Music, music gigs. Right. I know she. I know she's your mate, but is there any bit of a like? Oh, come on! Yeah, I hear me. Stri- I hear me stripes me. Get back in the circuit, you and. No, you. no, not at all. Oh, stop! Well, come on, we'll turn the cameras off. <laughs> Honestly, there's, there's, there must there's, be a little there's, bit. There's no. I mean, Jenny. If anything, is the one that I'm closest to is with the, mo- the most similar. Yeah. As, as people, there's no. There's nothing. You know, I. I in 1980, um, no, 2012, I play. I, I sang at her 30th birthday. Yeah. Um, and in um, me and Ollie's wedding, she sang at the wedding reception. We're really good friends. There's, there's no, there's, there's no. Beef. I'm telling you now, Paul. I've I've got a best mate. I've been best mates with since I was six. But if he starts stand up and doesn't hit the stripes, <laughs> he can go fuck himself. <laughs> I'll never speak to him again. She's going in at a different level, isn't she? Yeah, like yeah. if if your mate knew he had the profile <laughs> and went, you know, I'll just do this to piss him off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And went like, I know I could sell out more tickets than you, even though <laughs> I've never done it. He'd be like, go well, on, let's do it for a laugh. Yeah. So yeah. she's she she's just gone with doing like musical comedy gigs and then just she's never she's not done a circuit gig or anything. Well, she's but done does she wants at Edinburgh and right. and I mean she's she's going out with um oh Christ I've forgotten his name the guy who's the Tom. You can't be that close then Paul can you? Come on just be honest. Well, my brain's just can we stop for a second? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tom who does alternative comedy the more is, uh, with who get sketch comedy from Tuck. Tuck, 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 Tuck. Right, Tom Tuck sounds. I'll just put this in so we can stop in a minute. <coughs> I don't know. I don't think I've geeked up. I know the name. I do know the name, yeah. He was in... Um, he's, he's done a lot of sketch comedy and, and solo shows. Right, okay. He, right, he runs this thing called the Alternative Comedy Memorial Society. Actually, I might have... I, might <coughs> have I have definitely know the name. Book then. Comedy right. Collective or something. I might have seen it on there. So she's going with Tom Tuck. I assume she met him through you then. No, 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 I can't remember how. I, I, I mean, she's always been on the, you know, for a while she's been on the periphery, periphery of music. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that she knows Kiri Pritchard McLean and Rich yeah. Wilson and. All oh, right. Oh, fair enough. She's, no, she's, um, and she's not taking any shortcuts. She's. I know, I'm just taking a piss. <laughs> just trying to be funny, Paul. But we all, you know, at the end of the day, we all know that we're not, one day we're not, none of us are going to be chasers. And Is that the more like we The more we can support each other and, and do yeah, other yeah. things, the better. Are you like, have you been given the golden egg sort of thing? So that would have feel like a little bit. I know you had yes. stand up. Yeah. You had stand up on the outside of it. So I suppose with you, there's always sort of, you were in the entertainment industry. To yeah, yeah, yeah. But some of, the, some of them, are they a little bit like. Yeah, I mean, being, how, a, chaser cha- that, being a chaser has changed my life. It's, it's something yeah. I'm amazingly grateful to. It's, it's made my comedy career better. Uh, and yeah. but it's changed as well. It's changed the sort of, sort of people. Come and see me. Yeah, I, I, I've become very much uh, a granny, a granny's favourite. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the number of times I've turned up to a gig and the promoter's gone a bit older tonight. Mm. And I'm yeah. like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was so when, when I um, come out of our gig last night, and so I went in the gig and England had just won on penalties. Mm. So like, you can imagine what the what, what was like in the uh, black stock mm. and their age range and stuff. And then like been in the gig for like an hour or so, come out. And it's just grey, see a grey everywhere, all for Stan Borman, sort of thing. Like, yeah. just coming, like, what the fuck's happened there? How's everyone aged through horrifically? You know, like, yeah, that's going to happen, isn't it? That's going to happen. No, it's just so it, funny but... seeing the different clientele come in. Like, everyone, like, everyone's gone from using QR codes, to every, the bar's got cash. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, like to my dad, that you are the, easily the biggest guest we'll probably ever have. Like, is do you know what I mean? Like, like, as he probably is a bit well, Smith, isn't it? But yeah, but like that's that's nothing to my mum and dad. Will Smith, Paul Smith, oh, Paul Smith. <laughs> <laughs> not, you wouldn't not have Will, Will after Smith, what he's no. done. No, we never had Will Smith on. 
We won't do that for us. <laughs> Dealing with his agent must be a nightmare. I can understand yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't get back to us. <laughs> and, and it's nice when you're not recognised as well because on Thursday I was in Liverpool with the cab yeah. from um, station to Titanic and the cab driver said, um, what are you doing here? And I said, I'll explain what I was doing here. And I said, yeah. and I'm going to uh, the New Hot Water Club in, in, in Saturday. And then, ah, to go and watch Paul Smith, I imagine. Mm. And I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 what yes. am I, chop me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say, yeah, yeah, you say, yeah, yeah, I am, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't get into that conversation. Have you seen that Paul Smith? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. Cab drivers and comedy, it's tough, isn't it? Because you, you know, you, I mean, you'll know this. So many cab drivers are just one minute away from telling you how it's all gone woke. Yeah. Uh, what happened to jokes? <laughs> I t- yeah, it was weird when when we were found out of the comedy. Cab, I think cab drivers a lot of them think they can do it. Yeah, like a lot of people don't under- like p- people on cabs. They're not dissimilar from comics. They just don't want to get a proper job. So yeah, yeah. A lot of people who just couldn't handle being in like a corporate world. Or they've been or in jail. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. You, yeah, but they never dealt and never did they. That was the big thing. <laughs> you got it. Um, so like, it's a lot of people who. Think the better than they any are. job they could they could have got, <laughs> uh, better the qualifications. So when they all when they all f- uh, the route r- doing start, you get people I've never spoke to in my life knocking on my window. Do you do not comedy yet? And the next thing, telling me, telling me how they could <laughs> do comedy. it. Yeah. You do not telling me how they could do it, or they've always wanted, or how they were big fans of comedy. And you're just like, oh, for fuck's sake! I, I did a corporate recently where. As I was talking, on the screen behind me, it said Paul Sinha, a big photo of me, comedian. Yeah. Someone came up to me afterwards and said, so are you doing comedy now? <laughs> uh, and it's like, which, which bit of Paul Sinha, yeah. comedian? They, they don't... I, I had this yesterday. So I did a gig at a festival yesterday on the main stage yeah. right, whilst ridiculous. the band was setting up for the other artists. Show, right. him, show me story. Right. <laughs> <It was laughs> so we, I turned up and I was like, I said to them all, because I parked up, I thought when I got the gig, like two days notice, I thought it was going to be um, like a little car park in a marquee. Yeah. Turn up, die on my ass for 20 minutes and go home. Whilst Because they went, are you free to do a, some comedy? Some comedy <laughs> between <laughs> five and six when the match is on, which is a little red flag. So, so, so I was like, but I'm skin and I needed the money and nothing was in. So I went, okay, I'll do it. Turned up. Parked in this car park, they gave me, and then it was like a walk to the. Fe- I thought, oh, this is like a legit festival. This, I, yeah. I, like, this is not like a thing. So I walked in, and I was saying to the staff, like, oh, wh- where's the comment? Like, I'm a performer, and they're who, what? And no one knew anything. So then I got to the guest thing, got my guest, got in, and then I was asking, like, where's the comedy tent? And then it became apparent in like a couple of minutes. I thought, oh, the, there isn't one. We're, we're going on the main stage. We've been booked to do. 20 minutes each, well, Amazing. on the, the main size stage. Of the main right. stage, though. So, and, and then a, the, the lineup had a few big, so there's Lucy Spragan, who was on X Factor. Yeah, quite, yeah. Jamie Webster was on as well. I know. There's, a, there's a band called... You don't know Jamie Webster? You do know Jamie Webster. There's a band... Plays Boss Nights for Liverpool. Okay. The yeah. Scouts, who does all the Liverpool songs. Very anti, oh. anti-establishment. Um, um, the, and then the Raisins, who I turned out put the festival on, who were a band. Yeah. And they were backstage, but obviously me being me, and I I didn't know who any of them <laughs> were. <laughs> so I was speaking to the people who were headlining the gig, mm. who'd also put it on, not knowing that they were them. I thought they were just people who were yeah. moving the stage around or something. This is terrible. <laughs> this is everything. Like, is it is <laughs> his, um the story. The so s- that was... I imagine he's getting a weekend fee for this and he's doing it in the afternoon in the middle of the day. So that was... Uh, and then this was a photo I took of the other act who shall remain nameless. Um, so this is the them all setting up as we... So this is... So they're setting up behind us as we're... And how how did it go? <laughs> between, <laughs> between the three of us, we did a club set. Right. Uh, the MC went on, just did whatever he did. 
Uh, then the the opening act there was 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 meant to be opening, but had it started on time, right? I'd have had to open because he wasn't there. Right. <laughs> so I was thinking he's he's done this on purpose. He knew this was going to be fucking <laughs> dreadful, and he's turned up late, so I have to go and eat shit first. But thankfully, it overran a bit, so he turned up. So we had to go on first, and then I thought, well, let's see how long he does. He did eight, eight, eight. I did seven. Uh, which included me singing as well. Because uh, I thought, well, I'm never going to sing again on a main stage <laughs> at festival before. So I thought, like, How horrific was the story? And then, because I, I opened up about something about Rotherham and the Groom and Gangs, <laughs> and then I don't, think that, I don't <laughs> think that went well with whoever was listening. <laughs> and then, um, and then just was that one of the Was that one of the acts on stage? What? Rotherham and the Groom and Gangs. <laughs> 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 that thought, yeah, that thought, yeah. Next. That would, yeah, they could have done it. But there was just this fat ginger kid with glasses on that was just telling me to fuck off. <laughs> he was just, speaking of trolls, he was just going, fuck off, fuck off. And I went, what? And he was like, just fuck off. And I, you all right? And he went, I'm sorry. Yeah. He, didn't, <laughs> he didn't really care. He was a bit like, yeah, it's all right. Carry on. <laughs> and then it's that again. He go fuck off. And I was just like, and that's what I just thought. What even is this? So I just read. I think this is enough now. And then I just, I just left. And then where was, was this? Uh, in Rotherham. Oh, oh. So it was in. Yeah, the that's why you mentioned the green That's why you mentioned it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I just thought, why not? I mean, no one was listening. Did there you? was, there was kids. It was all kids on the front. It was like kids, and then. The, the match was on kids? over there with a big screen. It was right. just, I mean, we just thought you should probably get a fucking local act who does, who's like an open mic out who sings in pubs to yeah. just come and do 20. Mm. But then they just thought, oh, we'll chuck comedy on because we need <laughs> something on the stage. Wow, the, in their head, I think they thought, does we need something on the stage whilst everything else is going on? Well, I think I've got a gig much like this in Hartlepool in July. So, I <laughs> Really? <laughs> it's a festival. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I don't think it'll be because... Bear in mind, you're you're a bit you are known. We yeah. are we are three completely. We they might have thought we've just come up from the the the, the actual festival there. Yeah, they'd be well <laughs> within the rights to think. I don't think these are actually comedians. I think these are people who they've just picked yeah. to come and speak to us. I've done a lot of these gigs. <laughs> have you done a gig like that? I've, I've done a lot of really bad <laughs> open air gigs over the years. It, ne- it never were worked. they were they advertised as a comedy show. Not necessarily, no. Really, you still, <laughs> yeah, you still turn up at gigs like that. Well, no, I have done. Yeah. Right, I, I'm very much. What happened? Same thing. No one, no, one, no one cares what you got to <laughs> say. <laughs> Twenty. It was the fee that blew me away when I saw yeah. your story, and I saw just how big this festival was, and I was like, "What was the fee, please?" Yeah. And then you told me, I was like, "Oh no." Yeah, the low ceilings are the killer, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, but that's fundamentally it with open air gigs. Mm. There's no low ceiling. The gigs yeah. are already, you know, whatever else. <coughs> you finished, the, aren't you? The, the gigs already completely fucked. Yeah, at least it's, with it's music, never, it's never they already work. know the song, don't they? So it's like yeah, anything they can't. Although they did can fill sing in Oasis for a minute, and they did sing along, and it felt fucking brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> And I was like, I didn't know the words to it, but I just sung a little bit. And I was like, oh my god, imagine doing this to like there was only about four hundred people there in right. the front waiting for Jamie Webster. I do think every comedian should learn the lyrics to one song. Yes, just, just so they got just in, you never yeah. know. Get your four <laughs> minutes just, in, is it? Either live forever or <laughs> yeah. don't look back in anger or Sweet Caroline or, or something. No, I, I mean I don't even know the lyrics to Sweet Caroline, so I couldn't even start a yeah a I sing know. along with that. No, I know you know it There's when no you're just singing along, but when you're the one, when you're the one that has to do the actual singing with the mic, yeah, you're yeah. Like, oh, I need to know the words for this. Whereas you think you know the words in a group, well, that's because you're just in a group. But um, yeah, I could when, when it, that taste of when they sing, imagine oh, that would be. I could see why the divas. Should could started, see why the divas. Like, should have started doing Jamie Webster's songs. I don't. See, I, yeah, see but I don't. I don't know the words. I know right. how to sing along to it, but I don't know the words. And yeah, when difference. you have a gig like that, and you realise why so many rock stars became drug addicts and died yeah. young. Oh yeah. 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 If you think how hard it is for yeah. us. Yeah. The adrenaline rush. Yeah. And you say it must be incredible. For Your them. song that you've you've sung and you've made, and there's fifty thousand yeah. people in a field like that, and they'll yeah. sing along. Uh, you, it's another level of just like, oh my god, fifty thousand people singing champagne supernova back here. Must be. Can see why Liam Gallagher ended up like like wouldn't care. Yeah, because yeah. once you've got that level of of you've experienced that, yeah. you'd feel untouchable. 
And I, it's just something that you're never going to get, is it? No. Unless not, you go not, not, not an outdoor gig. You've got to shot at an indoor gig, but not at an outdoor Kevin gig. Kevin Hart. Yeah, you've got a shot of like, smashing like that, but like 80,000 people, but that back to you must be different. Yeah. Like when I did that one at Tatton Park with Manfred, he did it, he sung as well. Did he? He did Sweet Caroline. That's probably because he probably thought, yeah, I want to try and be a rock star. <laughs> now it's ended my head. I thought, oh, I could see why you just think, fuck it, let's have a sing song. Let's have now. a little sing song. If we're in a, in a festival sort of vibe. But then, there is, I mean, there is the fact that we have a maximum number of people we play to where the gig still feels yeah. like magic. Yeah. You, you, you go over that number and it's, it, you're just doing a gig. What's your number? I think 400, 500. I mean, I'd, 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 if you the, do big, the, the, the biggest gig I ever played to was in Johannesburg to 4,000 people. Right. And I didn't even know they were there. I, mean, I could hear them laughing, yeah. but I never saw the eyes of a single per. You know, I never saw yeah, the yeah, eyes yeah, of a single yeah. person. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it, it it was just an interesting social What gig was that? Just some weird, shit, some weird, like, ten comedians on a bill. A gala thing. gala thing, yeah. Have you got a, a tour date in the new hot water? Not yet, but I'd, looking that, at it, I'd love to. That new room is incredible. Yeah. It's full. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Unreal. I mean, I've, I've, you know, my last show is now totally irrelevant. <laughs> you do you going on tour again, or...? Well, you see, my health's not been great. I've had all sorts of shit yeah. going on. And uh, so I don't know what I'm doing, really. As long as I'm making money, <laughs> it's... it's <laughs> Is there a, um, Have you had to slow it all down? Um, yes and no. But which, I mean, I've had to cancel lots of shit for my health. Right. But now that I'm not Sh- cancelling stuff... You're up and down, are you? Uh, well, I, I had a heart problems in last year. Right. And then in February, I had a... Shoulder problem. It was. It doesn't sound like much, but I was in bed for two weeks in right. February. Just I couldn't get out of bed for two weeks. Okay, it's been it's been awful in many ways. But I'm back on. Yeah. You know, I'm back on the road. And gigging is. You know, if you look at my diary, it's, it's, it's unbelievably busy. It's a real variety pack. So it might be like a twenty minute club set here. Uh, the vacuum cleaner awards here. <laughs> <laughs> is it difficult for you to plan a tour then? Because I don't plan a tour with your health. You're just thinking. I don't plan. It. I just uh, I just look at my diary. Somewhere. Diary, go, this is where I'm meant to be, right? Yep, so Again, you know, I've been really lucky to have Ollie. Yeah, as, as a sort of, he drives me everywhere. You're not thinking about planning at all, then, no? Not at the moment. I, 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 took a, to I, I, I took a show to the Edinburgh Festival last year, and it was a big show, uh, and it's done now. It's, ir- it's irrelevant. It was because it was yeah. about politics, and now the politics has all changed. And yeah, it's, it's now an irrelevant show. So I've got to start thinking about doing something f- from, sc- from scratch again, right? I've always wanted to go back to the beginning and just stand on stage and do jokes, and yeah, and, and one-liners, and, and uh, to go back to that comedian that I, I aspired to be at the beginning. <laughs> it'd, be a ni- it'd be a nice little change of pace and tone to try and do that. But I've got to write a lot of jokes. An hour, of, an hour of one-liners is an hour of one-liners. Wow! Is that what you want to do? Uh, you start off as one-liners. Yeah, very much so. Ah, uh, right. When did but that? the first joke I ever got laughs for was I used to be a screaming homosexual. If you learn to relax your muscles, it doesn't hurt quite so bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first joke. Halfway, I was halfway through the set. <laughs> <laughs> I had two and a half minutes of nothing when that joke landed. When did that change then? Hmm? When did that change? I just think. Do you go from being one liner to more? Um, sort of mid noughties coming out to my dad, <laughs> seeing Daniel Kitson being brilliant. Yeah. That sort of thing, and I think it's really good to watch comedians that are better than you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 work out what in what ways you want to aspire. You, you want to aspire to being like them. Yeah, you have to be your own person. You can't just go. I want to be Daniel Kitson. You, you got mm. you've got to be your own person, but take inspiration for what they do that's better than what you do. And yeah, so that's why you drop you drop one liners and went after. I still have one liners. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also have lots of comment and stories and this, that, and the other. Uh, my my comedy's always been a mix. Um, it's the best way to be, though, isn't it? The one liners are, are, are relevant to my life. They're not like yeah. a man. <laughs> the <laughs> the man walks into a yeah. pet shop. And <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'd quite like it if the um, if the Germans had bombed my chippy. That that, that, that that really help in yeah selling tickets in <laughs> Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh well, I don't. I see you, you, th- at the moment, stand up is just one of lots of things that I do. 
Have you um, filmed any any specials or anything? No, and I don't want to. You don't want to? No. Uh, I mean, I, I think the time for me to film was, was when was the first show that I did after Dark Days with Parkinson's, because that was like a really big blockbuster show. Yeah. But because of COVID, nobody picked... Because of COVID, well, nobody... Would you do it again? Just film it yourself? Yeah. Do it one-off? You could, like, yeah. go back to it and do, do hot water, film it, put it in and put it on YouTube, so there's always something there, like a legacy yeah. thing. It's a very good idea, I know. Um, but uh, you know what it's like being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I think some comedy, like Roger Monkhouse, yeah, I've spoken to him about that, and he has absolutely no desire to like, leave any sort of footage Trace. or clip of anything yeah. he does. I was like, what about just, you know, something like, is he like, nah, what's the point? I've done it now for 33 years. I've seen I was a good time doing it. I've enjoyed I mean, it's, it. It's really, I mean, it's really weird. I, I can't stress the degree to which when I came into comedy, I didn't come in to leave an imprint. Yeah. I came in to make people laugh. Mm. Everything else has is, is, is been. Yeah. I, I don't know. With me, I feel like because <laughs> it was something I wanted to do since I was 13, and then eventually getting to do it. And I, I just feel there's a sense of sort of like, I don't know. If there's no record of it, what was the point? No, there's no record. It's just, it's, it's, like, it's like for yourself, to get, for, for myself more than anything else. It's like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Like, like to have something left behind, like, yeah, I did that, and I was. Mm. I, 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 it wasn't a it waste mu- of time. Yeah, it, it, it must almost almost be a bit like you know when it, like it's not to the same level, but when a boxer eventually wins a world title, and it's a bit like I've I've worked all my life for that. I wanted to do this since I was thirteen, and then having something where when you're seventy, I can go yeah. I imagine was, it's like that, was, that for a that singer. Was something I did in life, and I wanted to complete it. And there's me as a professional, decent level comedian, not as like an open spot doing a whole hour, but me as a decent level people. People paid to come and see me. Here's this, and I've got it now. It's like, like a like, singer if they go down pubs and clubs, Jack, and they all want to do an album. Probably, yeah. I imagine so. I imagine they want people to come and see them do their own songs. And they're just liking to sing. Mm. But you've got no real inclination for that. Tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is I, exhausting, I, I, isn't it? I, I should hire someone to do my social media. That's what a lot of people do now, isn't yeah. it? Is, is get an expert to come in. Uh, I find, you know, you said you've seen clips. It yeah. takes uh, two days for Oliver to get yeah. to <laughs> where he wants the clip to be because he's an absolute perfectionist. Yeah. Um, is he go- is he, does he know what he's doing and all that? He's do- he knows what he's doing. There's some but wizards, he, isn't there? Yeah. But um, it's 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 tiring, and then you don't know whether to give up, as you say, give up a joke. Yeah. I, I don't call it giving up a joke. I think you can put jokes on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and sure. people... Well, I think it's fine. Like I, I think people want to see them, yeah. Uh, my my, my favourite routine that I do at the moment, my Unilad routine, uh, yeah. comments left on Unilad after I got engaged. Um, it's not... It's 10,000 people have seen it online. Yeah. I don't get any less laughs on, on, no, s- no. on stage. Oh, no, you won't. I've had clips yeah. with millions of views and, and yeah. people still... No one in the audience shouts have seen that clip. Yeah. Every, uh, I don't I'm sure think they, do. they just laugh along. Everyone else just. I honestly don't think anyone sees anyone. <laughs> I, I don't because I don't think anyone takes anything in properly. Really, yeah. No, I know no, what you mean. Because they're scrolling don't, past it, yeah. they'll go yeah. and laugh at it, but it won't have any long-standing thing in the memory. But like we've gone, we've spoke about this for the joke theft thing. But my theory is that I don't think joke theft will be a thing soon because yeah. there'll be so m- it, everything's online, clipped up, yeah. brow, that no one's gonna know who came up with what first. And it's going to be like, and no one will care either. Well, no, one's, no one cares now. And that's yeah, what I mean, yeah. So it's yeah. just a bit like, put put it out and then it will go nowhere and then delete it in a year and then put it out again. I, someone came up to me yesterday and I was like, he's not do, he's still doing the best five days of your life thing. I was like, I don't think I've ever done that, mate. <laughs> and he was like, no, no. And then he started telling me the jokes and I was like, yeah, I did all them jokes. I haven't got a clue what you're on about best five days of my life. And it must have been how it, it must have been you, you know, we all sell our jokes a certain way. Yeah. I must have just linked them in with like, oh, this was a good day. Like, you know, that's sort of thing, or mm. one of the best five days of my life. That's sort of, you know, I must have just said and they that's how he's remembered. I've just been thinking, fucking hell. I'll, yeah, it's now. It's now, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Have you got to shoot, yeah. Yeah, he's got a book signing. Book signing at Watson's oh, at 12. Where, 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 where you sign your books? Watson's. Watson's. Nice. Right. Paul, what is your uh, social media that you can't be arsed with? Uh, at Paulie Bengali on Twitter, and I'm on Instagram somewhere. But it's Paul Sinner official, I'm going to say. Yeah, that's it. Is with it? With an underscore somewhere. Yeah, I was an underscore, yeah. right? You were okay. late to Instagram, weren't you? Mm? You were late to I was Instagram. late to all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Twitter, I've been on Twitter for... About yeah. Even then, I've checked... I, I, uh, long, long story cut short, 
I went off Twitter when I was ill. Yeah. And then I forgot to uh, sign in. So I lost my account. Oh. I, lo- I forgot to sign in for a month. Uh, and I lost my account. So I've had to start right from the beginning <laughs> uh, with at Paulie Bengali. Right. Um, oh. There you go. But, it, but, it, but in many ways, it's more fun starting from the beginning because you haven't got, haven't got quite, n- quite the number of dickheads. Well, just right, don't let the yeah, f- don't yeah. let the system fuck you. Losing your account can devastate you, can't it? Yeah. Right. Sweet. Sound to the Patreon. Paulie Bangali. Paul Sillin on Instagram, but you just Google them, you find them. Yeah. You all know who the cinema is. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. It's been an honour, Paul. Yeah. It's been a genuine pleasure. Lovely. You too. Right. Take it easy. Ta-da. Ta-da.